In this lecture, I am talking about anaerobic power or anaerobic capacity assessment through the Wingate test. So the Wingate test was designed in 1970s. Ever since, it has become a one of the gold standard test of anaerobic power assessment of an athletes in the field of exercise physiology. So my lecture, I would be concentrating on the physiological basis of Wingate test. So before going into the procedure of Wingate test, I would throw a light on the energy systems, the basis of uh, the anaerobic power of an individual. So the energy systems, as we know, we have aerobic and anaerobic uh, systems. The aerobic system is uh, the aerobic pathway, the metabolic pathway involves the glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. And as we know, this, uh, the energy, the ATP is ultimate currency for the uh, contractions of the muscles, contraction and relaxation of the muscles. And we have carbohydrates, fats that we eat through the diet. These nutrients undergo the series of chemical reactions in which these moieties undergo the breakage process of the glycolysis Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain in order to you know give off the ATP the energy so we have ATP develops through the aerobic system so aerobic system involves here the glycolysis Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain where the oxygen availability you know promotes the acyl coa the acyl coa one of the intermittent uh, the product of the aerobic system or aerobic metabolism uh, this acyl coa further pushes into the uh, the krebs cycle of uh, mitochondrion so the krebs cycle and the etc happens in the mitochondrion whereas the glycol glycolysis or glycolysis happens in the the cytosol of the cell any cell and now the oxygen pushes the acyl coa into the Krebs cycle. So the further the acyl coa undergo the series of chemical reaction in order to develop or produce the ATP via electron transport chain. This entire process is called aerobic process. Aerobic means presence of air, the life presence of air. And when it comes to the anaerobic uh, metabolism and anaerobic system, the anaerobic system, uh, you know, conversion of the lactate happens via the pyruvate, one of the three carbon intermediate moiety of the glycolysis in absence of the oxygen. So when oxygen is not available, so it's, uh, the pyruvate would not further converts into the acyl coa and this pyruvate eventually converts into the lactate from there the lactate goes into the somewhere else in the body particularly the liver and the heart and again this lactate utilizes as a energy source for the contracting muscles of the heart during the exercise and uh, majority amount of the lactate again converts back into the I know the glucose and participates in the uh, glycolysis via gluconeogenesis. This process is called anaerobic process. The anaerobic process means the glycolytic system produces the lactate in absence of oxygen. When oxygen is available, it, this pyruvate again converts into the acyl coa and acyl coa pushes into the Krebs cycle and thereafter it participates in the electron transport chain for further generation of the ATP. So the ultimate goal of any energy system to produce the ATP, which is again used for the contraction of the muscles, contraction and relaxations of the muscle or any other metabolic process of any other cell. And now we have one more system. The third system is intermittent system is called the phosphogen system the ATP CP system. So here the energy, as I said, the energy coming from the, the glycolytic process and, 
and anaerobic process that is anaerobic process fast glycolytic process anaerobic process and aerobic process slow oxidative system and this energy uh, you know eventually therefore used for the contraction of the muscles contraction and relaxation of the muscles and other metabolic process of the cell and once it utilized this atp utilized the the phosphate group usually breaks up and this becomes adenosine diphosphate and this moiety you know again uh, you know picks up the phosphate group from the phosphoryl creatine which is coming from the protein metabolism so this phosphoryl creatine you know decide to you know hand over the phosphate group to the adp adenosine phosphate and which is less stable and then this becomes atp again so this is how the small intermittent uh, uh, the minor intermittent energy system usually happens uh, in the cytosol of the cell particularly the contracting muscles skeletal muscles and provides ready made energy as and when requires because this uh, you know atp atp cp system acting as a the uh, the reserve system reserve energy system ready made reserve energy system because it is essential to have the ready made energy system in order to meet the you know instant instantaneous the huge demand of the energy while we switch over to the anaerobic metabolic activity and this is how the energy systems of aerobic and anaerobic and atp systems existing in these cells so ultimately the aerobic system means the uh, generation of the atp by via the oxidative phosphorylation system uh, which is uh, which involves glycolysis krebs cycle and electron transport chain so these two systems uh, the cycles happens in the mitochondria and this glycolysis happens in the cytosol and in anaerobic system you know the anaerobic system happens in only cytosol the pyruvate uh, you know converts to the uh, new moiety that is called lactate and lactic acid and this lactate uh, participates in the uh, energy for the contracting muscles of the heart and uh, converts back into the glycolytic pathway through gluconeogenesis so uh, the assessment of anaerobic uh, capacity or anaerobic power mainly concentrate these two systems one is uh, fast glycolytic that is anaerobic uh, metabolic system anaerobic energy system and uh, uh, this atp cp ready made energy systems these two energy systems are being concentrated through anaerobic assessment via wingate test so particularly in highly trained elite players in anaerobic games like uh, sprinters 100 and 200 meter sprinters for example uh, having the uh, the muscles of type 2 b and type 2 a particularly type 2 b so through the anaerobic assessment anaerobic capacity assessment anaerobic power assessment we do concentrates on type 2 b fibers how fast the fibers are activating through explosive manner via uh, the anaerobic metabolic pathway and as we know the ultimate or uh, the goal of any energy system to produce the atp so here the atp has got three phosphate groups the first phosphate group has got higher energy so this is ultimate currency of the cell ultimate fuel of any cell and in this uh, this slide i would be uh, i would concentrating on the 4 minute of high intensive exercise you know extreme exercise of 4 minute starting with the 10 second 15 second 240 seconds and the fractions of aerobic uh, anaerobic and aerobic metabolic uh, involvement of uh, an individual right so in this case when you look at the 
30 second of exercise approximately 70 to 80 percent of an energy system is contributed by the anaerobic system because the oxygen availability highly compromised as we switch over to the extreme high intensity exercise and whereas approximately 20 or 25 percentage is uh, up to 30 percentage of energy system is contributed by the the aerobic uh, metabolic pathway so what i mean to say here so when you switch over the exercise whether it is aerobic or anaerobic system anaerobic uh, met exercise extreme exercise or aerobic exercise so the no doubt the two metabolic pathways do involves aerobic and anaerobic systems but the fractions are depends on the intensity of exercise if I switch over my exercise with the high intensity 95 90 percent is of my actual load physiological load so I would be contributing my anaerobic system approximately 70 to 80 percentage of energy yield so no the when 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 i performing the exercise up to fourth minute with the high intensity my energy systems would be reverse here the anaerobic system contributing the 20 percentage whereas aerobic you know switching over to up to 80 percentage of contribution energy yield so this graph shows the percentage of total energy contributed by the three energy systems we have phosphogen system which is ready-made system and glycolytic system and oxidative phosphorylative system so the, this graph actually showing the relative contributions so in Wingate test or anaerobic power assessment test as I mentioned in earlier slide we do concentrating on the anaerobic metabolic pathway anaerobic metabolic pathway of particularly type 2b fibers the explosive uh, the fibers of the skeletal muscles and uh, and the wingate test you know we we, we we designed the wingate test up to 30 seconds so the 30 second of high explosive high intensity the explosive exercise is required for the Wingate test is up to uh, here on the x-axis we have the time slot so up we concentrating up to here that means uh, the blue color uh, the plot of uh, arrow uh, this phosphogen system ATP CTP system and the red color plot uh, you know of uh, anaerobic system anaerobic uh, glycolytic system so majority of uh, uh, you know the energy yield is coming from the the two systems one is uh, the ready-made energy that is ATP CP and secondly the anaerobic uh, metabolic pathway so that means this exercise this uh, wind gate exercise uh, to assess the anaerobic uh, power of an individual is comes under the high intensity explosive efforts which is lasting uh, you know less than one you know minute less than one minute particularly 30 second test so so by this Wingate test we intended to see how explosively the individual is you know generating the power so what is actually the contribution of uh, the fast glycolytic uh, the sprinting muscles in the individual if muscle mass is more ultimately the power is more but that is not the case in all sporting activity certain sports require the weight category so in weight category sports they have to maintain the the weight but ultimately this anaerobic Wingate test would give us the the idea about the explosiveness of the fast glycolytic fibers those are the type 2b fibers type 2b fibers and certain extent of type 2a fibers too those are called intermittent fibers and this is the Wingate was designed in 1970s uh, and uh, the 
the bike has got the basket and in which we can uh, adjust the weight the weight the weight plates over here we can adjust the weight and this is the thread uh, apart you know according to weight the thread becomes tightened and loosened so that it creates the friction on the flywheel this is the flywheel which is attached with the uh, the thread and this thread eventually regulated by the weight basket so this is wingate cycle wingate bike so uh, in this uh, slide i would uh, wanted to show how the test is performed so when a player comes uh, to a lab so we ask their weight and we check their weight and they we record the basic uh, the sporting activity and mainly we concentrate on the anaerobic games like power games combat games and sprinting games so we accordingly the weight of an individual we take the you know 7.5 percentage of weight on the basket 7.5 percentage of weight on the basket the weighing basket we put the proportionate to the the athlete's weight and we ask the athlete to you know acclimatize to the wind gate for approximately 5 to 10 minutes with the low uh, you know cycling so we'll repeat uh, we'll repeatedly we'll ask the player to do the testing in one or two visits to the lab to acclimatization once the athlete is properly acclimatized to the wind gate test then we perform the final wind gate test in which we ask the player to sprint the cycle as fast as possible which because uh, because we wanted to see uh, you, know, you know the power of any an athletes what is the power generated by an athletes so this is how we perform the test we ask the player to sprint as fast as possible so the the uh, the player has to generate the maximum the explosive power by uh, by house you know muscles so in order to record the power or capacity of the muscles because we concentrating on anaerobic uh, the muscle fibers in this test so at the end of test so this is how we see the uh, results at the end of uh, test uh, there are two uh, graphs over here one is uh, one graph shows the power output over time of uh, 30 seconds and uh, the second graph shows the uh, rpm re uh, revolutions uh, per minute of the cycle um, up to 30 second as i mentioned the test you know essentially uh, you know performed 30 seconds so only 30 second test and explosive test so here we have different uh, the values here we have peak power so it shows how much power was generated by the player and relative power of uh, you know the player with the kilogram weight of the muscles and average power so the average power calculates the power generated you know, over a every five seconds this is every five seconds segments how much power generated here and here here and we calculate the average power throughout the 30 second test and we also see the uh, you know the relative average power and the minimum power here so this is the minimum power generated by an athlete and power drop so here the power drop means the mac the the how the power the maximum peak power is uh, you know gradually declining the dif drifting uh, you know over a period of 30 seconds that is called power drop which uh, gives us the fatigue index so the uh, the amount of fatigue developed by the an athlete so and we also see the explosive power so the explosive power means the time requirement to generate the peak power here the time requirement to generate the peak power is uh, one second approximately one second or uh, 1003 milliseconds so the explosive power means uh, the amount of peak power generated by an athlete in given time so how much uh, the time latency time is taken 
from starting of the test to reach the uh, you know the peak uh, power so here so the starting of the test here so it's a very minute time so one second and reached peak power so this is called the explosive power so the peak power upon time in seconds would give us explosive power so this explosive power would give us uh, the recruitment of motor units and explosive uh, action of the you know the neuromuscular uh, junctions and the muscle response ultimately the peak power which give us the indication of how much power being developed by an aerobic metabolic pathway of an individual so this is a very essential test in order to assess the anaerobic capacity or anaerobic power of an individual in exercise physiology is concerned so with this i am concluding the wind gate test so the in summary the wind gate test is designed to understand the anaerobic metabolic pathway of an individual of particularly type 2b and type 2a fibers those are explosive fibers of the skeletal muscles and mainly the wind gate test is targeted to the explosive games combat games and sprinting games so this wind gate test is one of the gold standard tests in order to assess the the anaerobic capacity of an individual thereby indirectly the type 2b fibers and in wind gate test we have different uh, you know parameters to look into the athletes you know adaptation physiological adaptation so this is how we see the wind gate test and its you know physiological basis of wind gate test thank you for watching